Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Living Waters Chapel on Resurrection Sunday. We're glad that you're joining us here online. We'll be back in about five minutes after the countdown to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Jesus.
Well, welcome back to Living Waters Chapel here on Resurrection Sunday. We are glad that you are joining us. A few quick announcements before we get started. First, here on Facebook Live is one of the many ways that you can watch or on YouTube. But if you know somebody who does not have any internet access, we encourage you to quickly give them this information so they can still listen into this morning's service. They can call 646-558-8656. And then the meeting ID is 328-889-736. And the password is 1900. Also, if you have kids watching with you this morning, we encourage you to grab a few things. First of all, I know you have this at your house, but a roll of toilet paper. So grab a roll of toilet paper, some scissors, some paper, some tape, and then also some popsicle sticks if you have any, or we can just use paper instead, a glue and marker and a pen. We'll be using those throughout this morning's service. And then also for everyone watching, we're gonna be sharing in communion at the end of the service. So. If you haven't already, grab some communion supplies that you can use, whether it be saltine crackers or bread, and then some grape juice or even apple juice if you might have that as well, so that you can partake in communion with us later on. For the kids that are watching, I had said to grab that roll of toilet paper, and as Donna comes and sings that song, Christ Arose, I want you to begin to wrap up one of the members of your family in that toilet paper. I'm going to show you a video right now of my family doing that to uh, ourselves. And then as she sings that song, Christ arose, up from the grave he arose. I want that person who's wrapped up in that toilet paper to break out of that toilet paper. Don't worry, you can save the toilet paper and reuse it later on. I know some people are in a toilet paper shortage. So begin to do that now. Now we're going to turn over to Donna as she shares this special hymn, Christ arose.
thank you, Donna, for sharing that great hymn with us. We encourage the rest of you now at home to join us as we sing, I will sing forever of your love come down. And I will sing forever of your love come down with my hands to and shout your praises loud. I was lost in darkness when you pulled me out. I sing forever of your love come down. was blind, I could not see, chains of sin had shackled me, but God in heaven heard my plea, Jesus, Jesus, rescue me, I will sing forever of your love come down, with my hands to heaven shout your praises loud, I was lost in darkness when you pulled me out. Sing forever of your love come down oh. Grace so sweet it floods my soul and hope eternal won't let go my dead erase at Calvary it's Jesus Jesus rescue me Jesus, Jesus, rescue me. And what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. So precious is the blood that makes me white as snow. Sing it again. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other bounds I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. So the veil you made away when you said that it is done. You tore the veil you made away when you said that it. Oh, let's sing that again. You tore the veil. You tore the veil. You made a way when you said that it is done. Oh, when you tore the veil. You made a way when you said that it is done. You tore the veil, oh. You made a way where there seemed to be no way. You overcame sin. You overcame sin, Lord. You tore the veil. When his final breath was taken on the cross, he tore the veil that separated us from God. And now we can approach the throne of God with confidence. He made a way for you, for me. And then on that third day as we celebrate this morning on Resurrection Sunday, He rose, not only conquering sin, but conquering grave. Let's continue to worship. Then came the morning that sealed the promise your buried body began to breathe out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave 
has no claim on me. Then came the morning, then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe out of the silence, the roaring lion declared the grave has no sin. Before we turn it over to Pastor Dalton, for the kids that are watching, those supplies that I mentioned, one of those were pieces of paper. I want you to take those pieces of paper and cut them and make some paper chains out of them. And while Pastor Dalton's sharing, make some paper chains. And then at the end, we're going to be singing the song, Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone. I want to encourage you to take the chains that you have made and break them as we sing that song. So I'm going to turn it over to Pastor Dalton now. Well, we're going to take a look at um, a couple of scriptures here that, that talk about Barabbas and also that talk about our spiritual state. So I'm going to start here in Luke 23, starting at verse 13. Pilate called together the chief priests, the rulers, and the people, and said to them, You brought me this man as one who is inciting the people to rebellion. I have examined him in your presence and have found no basis for your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. As you can see, he has done nothing to deserve death. Therefore, I will punish him and then release him. 
With one voice they cried out, Away with this man! Release Barabbas to us! Barabbas had been known, uh, had been thrown into prison for an insurrection in the city and for murder. Wanting to release Jesus, Pilate appealed to them again, but they kept shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! For the third time he spoke to them, Why? What crime has this man committed? I have found him, uh, I have found in him no grounds for the death penalty. Therefore, I will have him punished and then release him. But with loud shouts, they insistently demanded that he be crucified, and their shouts prevailed. So Pilate decided to grant their demand. He released the man who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder, the one they asked for, and surrendered Jesus to their will. And now I'm going to open up here to Romans 3, starting at verse 10. And, uh, and then I'll comment afterward. As it is written, there is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands, no one who seeks God. All have turned away. They have together become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one. Their throats are open graves. Their tongues practice deceit. The poison of vipers is on their lips. Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Ruin and misery mark their ways, and the way of peace they do not know. There is no fear of God before their eyes. And um, so just to touch on uh, why, why we look at Barabbas, um, we, we see in, in Luke that Barabbas, he was in jail for rebellion and also for murder during that rebellion. And um, at first glance, you, you probably just read over that and say, okay, Barabbas, cool. Um, but when you look a little bit closer at that story in, in light of uh, Romans 3, we realize um, that we ourselves, we've all rebelled against God. We've all uh, sinned against God. Um, we, we, we all, in our own strength, uh, apart from faith in Jesus, we've all um, been Barabbas. Now Barabbas, uh, he's known in other accounts in the gospel for murder, for uh, insurrection, for rebellion. Uh, all these, all these things that we might say, "Wow, he's a really bad guy," um, but the matter of the fact is, um, Romans three isn't about Barabbas. Romans three is about us. Um, I'm not here to tell you how bad of a person you are or how bad of a person I am. Um, that's it, the the matter of the fact is, um, we've all rebelled against God. We've all sinned, and um, I, I thought it was interesting also in Isaiah fifty three. It, it tells us that uh, Jesus, he was pierced for our transgressions. And I'm someone who likes to know the meaning of words. So I looked up what transgression actually meant. And transgression is an act that goes against a law, rule, or code of conduct. It's an offense. And um, we know elsewhere in scripture that we've all sinned. We've all fallen short. We've all broken God's law. And uh, Barabbas, the story wasn't about him necessarily. The story um, is Barabbas is a personification of what we are, rebellion against God on our own. And, and I'm not here to just focus and, and, and dig deep on uh, us not being good enough. I'm, I, I want to I wanna look at what actually happened there. That Barabbas, although he, he sinned and he fell apart, uh, he, he pushed away from the law, um, Jesus took his place anyway. Jesus allowed himself to be the punishment for Barabbas. The people wanted it, and, and that's how we are. We, we don't want to uh, own up to the things that we've done. We don't want to own up for the punishment that we deserve, and, and Jesus took that anyway. And we don't, It doesn't say in that story that Barabbas went away and repented and, and accepted Jesus as his Lord, uh, but Jesus took his place anyway not knowing what Bar Barabbas' response would be. And I want to challenge you this morning, and I want to, I want to give you hope and courage that, um, that Jesus did die the death that we deserved so that we could have the life that he deserved. And um, it's an undeserved grace that, that Jesus would take our place not in, and not expect um, anything in return. It was a free gift. Jesus took our place so that we might have the chance to put our faith in him and, uh, and, and 
be right with God. Thank you, Pastor Dalton, for sharing those reflections. And it reminds us of the amazing grace that we each have received. We each could have been in that place that Barabbas was at, but Jesus stepped into our place and took our punishment. It's amazing grace. Would you sing along with us? This is amazing grace.
but now I see it was grace that taught my heart to feel and grace my fears relieved how precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed my chains are something that each of us don't deserve, but he still gave it freely. As we continue to travel through different people who received life over death, we're going to turn it over to Pastor Chris now as he shares a personal testimony and some insight into how we can receive life over death. We are going to be focusing this morning on life over death. And as many of you know, I have had a recent uh, health uh, procedure, surgery that was not planned. And during that time of my recovery, there were some moments where it was uh, touch and go. And um, we, were able to, we were able to see God's hand of, of victory in my life. And I continue to recover and continue uh, to get stronger each and every day. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verses 8 through 14 say this, So do not be ashamed to testify about our Lord, or ashamed of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God, who has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of our own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus, before the beginning of time, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. And of this gospel I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. That is why I am suffering as I am. Yet I am not ashamed because I know whom I have believed and am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him for that day. What you have heard from me, keep as the pattern of sound teaching with faith and love in Christ Jesus. Guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you. Guard it 
with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. Each and every one of us has a testimony. Each and every one of us has a story to share. And as you share your story and as you share your testimony, you are able to offer words of hope, words of encouragement, words of life. You are able to bring life into people's dark situations and desperate situations. I would encourage you just to live a holy life as we have been called to live a holy life. Verse 10 reminds us that Jesus Christ has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. We know the message of the gospel is great news. And each and every one of us has been appointed as heralds, as, as spokespeople to share this message of Jesus Christ. Yes, we may at times experience suffering, but we should not be ashamed of sharing the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. We should not be ashamed at sharing our story and our testimony because we know whom we have believed in. We know who we are, are convinced in that God is able to guard what He has entrusted to us. God has entrusted each and every one of you with a story to offer hope and help to people. So I would encourage you to guard that deposit that God has entrusted to you. Guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit. Share it with boldness and with power. The difference that Jesus Christ has made in your hearts and in your lives. And because of it, you will be bringing hope to people. You will be giving them an opportunity to choose life over death. Well, thank you, Pastor Chris, for sharing that powerful testimony from your own life, but also the encouragement to the rest of us watching that beyond just people in Scripture receiving life over death, we can receive the life over death that Christ has for us. Today we're going to continue to sing and celebrate by singing that song, It's All Because of Jesus, I'm Alive. Would you sing it along with us? The giver of every breath I breathe, author of all Giver of every perfect thing, to you be the glory. And maker of heaven and of earth, no one can comprehend your love. King over all the universe, to you be the glory. I'm alive because I'm alive in you. It's all because of Jesus I'm alive. It's all because of the blood of Jesus Christ. It covers me and makes this and that life. Oh, it's all because of Jesus. Author of all eternity, giver of every perfect thing, to you be the glory, maker of heaven and of earth, no one can comprehend your word, king over all the universe, to you be the glory, sing it out, I'm alive, I'm alive because I'm alive in Oh, 
Jesus. Yes, it's all because of Jesus I'm alive. And it's all because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Who covers me and makes this dead man's life. Oh, it's all because of Jesus. Every sunrise sings your praise. The universe cries out your praise. I'm singing freedom all my days. Now that I'm alive, I'll sing it again. Oh, and every sunrise sings your praise. The universe cries out your praise. I'm singing freedom all my days. Now that I'm alive. just a moment because he lives you have life because he lives you have hope because he lives all fear is gone that while fear might come our way we can cast that care that fear those worries on him but because he lives we can face not just today but tomorrow in the hope that He is with us and He has given us life over death. And life is worth the living just because He lives. Let's sing it again together. Because He lives. Because He lives I can face tomorrow Life is worth the living. 
Because you live, we can face tomorrow. There's hope in your name. Pastor Rich is going to share now about how three people responded with life compared to death. One died in their sin. One died to sin. And one died for sin. We're going to learn about how Jesus hung next to those two criminals on the cross. One chose to give their life to Jesus. The other choose, chose to die in his sin. Pastor Rich, would you share now? Hey, good morning, Living Waters Chapel. We wanna welcome you to our Sunday resurrection service and we're so thankful that you can be with us today. I wanna to share with you and continue our theme of life over death and I would encourage you to take your Bibles and turn to Luke's Gospel, chapter 23. Because of what God has accomplished through his son's death and resurrection, making atonement for sin and the provision for eternal life possible, every person has a very and critical decision to make in their lives. In its simplest terms, this decision is whether we will choose life over death. Let's observe this morning the decision that the two men made who were crucified with Jesus on what we refer to as Good Friday. In Luke's Gospel, chapter 23, we read this account. One of the criminals who had hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence? We are punished justly for the, getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth. Today you will be with me in paradise. Of the three men that died on crosses that day, we'll look first at the man who died in his sin. Now both of the criminals who were on either side of Jesus were facing physical death as judgment for violating the law through their wrong choices and actions. The basis for their wrong decisions and actions was not circumstantial. It was not issues like their home environment or their socioeconomic standing or their education or the lack thereof. Their problem was conditional. They were born with a sinful nature. The Apostle Paul in his letter to the Romans made this statement, for all have sinned and come short of God's glory. A little later on, Paul wrote this in chapter 5, Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man, and death through sin, and in this way death came to all men, because all sinned. In one of his later letters, Paul wrote to the Ephesian church and made this statement, As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins. I'm speaking to you this morning from the center of Holy Cross Cemetery, just adjacent to our church campus. Many people have very eerie feelings about being in a cemetery. They think that that's the place where people end up at the end of their life. But I want to challenge you to think a little differently this morning. Spiritually speaking, all of us begin at a place and a point of death because of our sin and our sinful nature. You see, the problem of the criminals that day is our problem today because their condition is our condition. We are sinners by nature and without Jesus we are spiritually dead. The mocking criminal failed to see beyond himself and to realize that his felt need was not his true need, nor did he notice anything different, unique, or peculiar about this Jesus on the center cross. He said, aren't you the Messiah? If you are, change your negative circumstances, our negative circumstances. Get us out of this predicament if you're who you say you are. In other words, he was saying, God, if you are real and you are there, get me out of this terrible situation. And by the way, don't expect me to change or try to change me. Well, the second man we'll consider is the man who died to sin that day. The repentant thief saw his situation differently. 
not from a self-centered perspective, but rather from God's perspective. Don't you fear God, he had asked his companion and fellow criminal. Don't you have any regard or respect for God or the things of God or people who are related and associated to God? This man may not have had Jesus figured out theologically, but spiritually, he had the discernment and the intuition to realize that Jesus was at the very least a very holy and godly man. <clears throat> the second thief wasn't blaming his situation on something or someone else, including God, but he was readily admitting and acknowledging he knew he was a sinner. He owned his past choices, and he was accepting of the fact he was getting what he deserved. He said, we are punished justly, for we are getting what our deeds deserve. King David wrote many, many, many centuries prior to this point in history, the fool says in his heart there is no God. They are corrupt, their deeds are vile, and there is no one who does good. Found in Psalm 14 and verse 1. The prophet Isaiah in his writings declared this, We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. And again, the Apostle Paul in his letter to the Roman church declared this, The wages of sin is death. Of course, Paul there is speaking and referring not just to physical death, which seems to be a great thing of cause and anxiety and fear for many people, but it is spiritual death, that is eternal separation from God. Well, the man, the second man that we are looking at who died on the cross that day to sin, he knew that he was unworthy. He realized he was undeserving. He knew that trusting in himself and living life his way had gotten him into the predicament that he now found himself in, and he wasn't blaming anyone else for it. But he believed that change was possible, even with the limited time that he had left here on this earth. He knew that God was merciful, and he had risked associating that this Jesus who was on the center cross was related to or associated or connected with that merciful God. Because of his choice, that man perhaps has this as his theme song, not only in paradise, but will be singing it throughout all of eternity. Words that mirror what Paul wrote in his letter to the Galatians in chapter two. I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Well, there is the third man, the man on the center cross, the man we know as Jesus of Nazareth. The man on that cross indeed was very different from the men on either side of him. He shared their same agonizing death, but he was different than them. He was different than any other man who stood and watched as Jesus drew his last breath. Jesus was different than any other person who has ever walked upon this earth. According to the theologians, he was the infinite God-man, both God and man. Isaiah the prophet again described him as despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. Like one from whom men hide their faces, he was esteemed not by us. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him and by his wounds we are healed. The Apostle John described him as the Word who became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Again, quoting from the Apostle Paul, he makes this statement, God made him who knew no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. And Jesus said of himself in John's Gospel, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Jesus, of course, is referring to the fact that when we die a physical death, if we have put faith and trust in him, if we have chosen him and chosen eternal life, we will never die spiritually. Well, in conclusion, let me ask you, what will you choose? 
If you have not made a choice yet, your choice has been made for you. You've been born spiritually dead. But the good news is this morning, you do not have to remain that way because of Jesus Christ coming and overcoming death, and overcoming sin, the power of darkness and hell. You can know spiritual life. Will you choose to remain in spiritual death? Or will you choose today to believe in Jesus Christ as your Savior, that he was who he said he was, that he came to do what he said he came to do? And will you choose everlasting life over death today. As I close, I would like to invite you to respond in your own way to this question if you do not know Christ as your Savior. I would like to lead you in a prayer and very simply I'm going to ask you to do three things and you can pray out loud or you can pray inwardly this morning if you have not made a decision to accept Christ as your Savior. Letter A, I want you to acknowledge to God today that you are a sinner just like that second thief that we talked about who realized he was getting what he deserved physically because of his failures, because he was a sinner. Secondly, I want you be to believe that Jesus is who he said he is and what the Bible says of Jesus, that he was the Son of God. Jesus declared in John's Gospel, chapter 3, that the Father had sent him into the world, that whoever would believe in him would not perish eternally and spiritually, but would have everlasting life. And then see, I want you to confess, not only this morning, but in the, the days to come, to confess through your life, not only with your words, but in your actions, that Jesus is your Savior. And God will help you, and the Word of God will guide you on how to make that confession more consistent and effective and real in the days to come. Would you pray with me as I pray this very simple prayer, and you can repeat it after me. Heavenly Father, I acknowledge today that I am a sinner, and I realize, like that second thief that was spoken of today, that I have done many things wrong, but beyond that, and more importantly, I have a sinful nature. And I have tried maybe many times to change my ways, but God, today I'm asking you to come by your Holy Spirit to enter my life and to change my heart and my life condition. I pray, O oh God, that you would forgive me of my sin. Jesus, I recognize that you died on the cross for me, and for my sin. And today I thank you for taking my place. I accept your forgiveness. And Jesus, I ask that you would bring eternal life into my heart and into my life today. I pray these things in faith believing in Jesus name. Amen. If you've prayed that prayer this morning, we want to congratulate you. We want to welcome you into God's family. And we encourage you to contact us here at Living Waters Chapel. We can give you some very helpful information and guidance on how to continue to grow in your new spiritual life because you have today chosen life over death. May God bless you. Wow, Pastor Rich, what an amazing opportunity we each have to choose Jesus Christ as our Lord, as our Savior. And if you just said that prayer, if you just asked Jesus to be your Savior, and we are excited that you've made that decision. For those of you who are watching, who have Jesus has been your savior for a long time, we know that one of the greatest things we can do is to take communion together, to celebrate his broken body, his shed blood. And so we wanna encourage you right now, begin to get those supplies together. We're gonna to sing just a little bit as you get those supplies together. And we're gonna take a moment, take a break, to take it together here, all at the same time. So as you're gathering it, let's sing together. He became sin. He became sin who knew no sin. That we might become his righteousness. He humbled himself and carried the cross. Love so
If you have your Bibles, I want to encourage you to turn to John chapter 6. In John chapter 6, verse 53, we read that Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood, what we're holding here in front of us here this morning, his broken body, the cup or the juice that represents his blood. He said it, that whenever we eat that flesh and drink that blood, we have eternal life and I will raise them up at the last day. For my flesh is real food and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father. So the one who feeds on me will live because of me. So as we prepare to take this communion this morning, his broken body and his shed blood, it reminds us that we have life over death, that we have eternal life. As Pastor Rich shared earlier in John 3, 16, it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him would not perish but have eternal life. And whether this morning was the first time you made that choice or you've been walking in faith, we encourage you to partake communion with us this morning. Because as it says in those verses, in verse 58, this is the bread that came down from heaven. Your ancestors ate manna and died, but whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. See, we have an eternal hope that when life on this earth ends, we will receive our eternal life, our blessed hope. So would you join me this morning? Go ahead and take the bread, his body that was broken for us. Jesus, thank you for allowing your body to be broken, but then to rise again and conquer not just sin, but death. And now let's take together of the cup representing his blood that was shed. This morning as you take those together, the Bible says that you now have the life of Christ in you. See, Jesus didn't just die and then not keep his promise. He rose again, and he is the resurrection and the life, the way, the truth, and the life, the bread of life. And he wants his life to live abundantly in you. Thank you for joining us as we've taken communion. Now let's just close this time out 
by declaring one more time that he is Jesus Messiah. Jesus Messiah, name above all names, blessed Redeemer, he's Emmanuel, God with us, Emmanuel. Thank you for worshiping with us this morning. And uh, again, as Pastor Rich shared earlier, if you are one of those ones who gave your life to Christ for the first time and received salvation and received life over death, eternal life, we encourage you to get in contact with us. We want to celebrate what God has done in your life. Heavenly Father, thank you for what we've been able to celebrate this morning. But it doesn't just stop here and now. It doesn't end at the end of this gathering. Your life goes on. The life that you have given us changes us so that we can live day by day, moment by moment in your strength and your power. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead is alive in us now. Thank you for giving us life over death. Amen. Thank you again for joining us. We just sang that song that says, Jesus gives us living hope. All our hope is in you. Before you leave this morning, we encourage you to stick around for this quick announcement from Pastor Chris about an opportunity that we have as a church to bring boxes of hope into our community. 
Once again, thank you for joining us. So often the simplest gestures have the greatest impact, especially in times of crisis. With the spread of COVID-19 within our nation, it has become apparent that the thing that is needed most is not found on the supermarket shelves. What is this commodity? It is hope. Quarantine can make a person feel afraid and hopeless, especially as certain goods run out. An individual has said, a simple box filled with supplies delivered to the door of someone who can't leave their house is a way to show someone that God sees them and that they are not forgotten. We will be partnering with Convoy of Hope, a global disaster relief organization. We are expecting a tractor trailer filled with supplies to be delivered to our church in the near future. While illness, quarantine, job loss, isolation, and fear can easily overwhelm, hope can be delivered right to your door. Boxes of hope are a simple means to literally bring much needed supplies and a message of hope directly to the doorsteps of those who need it most. We will be gathering volunteers from Living Waters Chapel who will get these boxes ready and deliver them to their neighbors. By visiting www.lwc-ag.org, those in 14-day quarantine or those who are vulnerable due to age or underlying health concerns can request a box containing necessities such as toilet paper, paper towels, disinfectant wipes, diapers, baby wipes, and even snacks. It is important to note that boxes of hope are completely free of charge. They are meant to be a tangible encouragement to those who cannot leave their homes. Pastor Chris Moranti said, when you read about the life of Jesus, he always cared about those who were on the fringes of society and forgotten. He was not afraid to reach out to those who were faced with the deepest challenges. That is what God's love is all about. As followers of Jesus, this is what our church wants to model to our friends and neighbors. By visiting www.lwc-ag.org, you may sign up to volunteer. You may donate money to this cause. We will have two drop-off times for you to drop off supplies. Tuesdays from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. and Thursdays from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. The drop-off location will be at the rear of the fellowship building by the kitchen entrance at Living Waters Chapel, 1900 J Street. We will be mobilizing volunteers to deliver these boxes of hope to our neighbor's doorsteps while taking every precaution to keep our volunteers and neighbors safe. This delivery will allow people to tangibly experience the love of Christ. All items are being sanitized before they are being placed in boxes. Safety is paramount in the packing process for each box of hope. Volunteers will wear masks and gloves and items will be sanitized before being placed into the boxes. They will work in shifts as families stationed at least eight feet apart. The vision for these boxes is to see hope spread faster than COVID-19. And with the willing hands and hearts of churches like Living Waters Chapel, this vision will be realized. Living Waters Chapel's vision is loving God, loving people, and changing lives. For more information or to participate in our online services, visit our website at www.lwc-ag.org. Thank you for your support and your consideration of this, pro of this project. God bless you.